Well, hello and a very good afternoon to each and every one of you. Bonjour and welcome to Nancy. In France, we are using this wonderful organ today for the first time in virtual church and it really gives me an opportunity to get to know this organ better actually using it live and uh, finding out the solo stops in a live situation like we are now. So I hope it goes okay. That was Immortal Invisible, as you all know. It's one of my favourite top ten. Uh, but the last verse, you wouldn't have heard that before, I don't think, on this channel. Um, and I'm very happy to play that over one of Noel Rawsthorne, simply because um, Barry Rose is one of my uh, choral uh, choir trainer, uh, choir training heroes. And he wrote that descant. It's a, some wonderful... Um, uh, there is literally a desk hunt on top for sopranos, and the harmony there is also by Barry Rose. So there we go. That was a wonderful way to open today's virtual church, uh, which is a request from Katie, who is down in South Africa. Katie's been with us for a very long time and uh, is a wonderful member of our community. The next hymn, which I think is in the same hymn book, is going to be number 284. It is For the Fruits of His Creation. A wonderful tune, uh, as some of you people will know, particularly the people um, who are northerners uh, here in the UK. Music is by the legendary Francis Jackson. It's called East Acklam. East Acklam is where Francis Jackson now lives. He's 101, I think, now. He's very, very uh, much alive and well. In fact, if you look over on my right-hand side, I'm pointing to a picture which is just off screen right now. The person that I'm shaking hands with in that photograph is indeed Francis Jackson. So I'm playing his hymn tune uh, for Julian, who is a patron. Hi, Julian, thank you for your support. Um, and we'll have three verses. This is a um, very, very peevish tune to give someone as a transposition test. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Julian, indeed, for requesting uh, such a wonderful tune. Uh, wonderful words as well. It's obviously appropriate for the season of harvest, for the fruits of all creation. Thanks be to God. For the gifts of every nation. Thanks be to God. For the ploughing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping. Future needs in earth's safekeeping. Thanks be to God. It's a wonderful uh, tribute to our farming industry. This next hymn actually reminds me of university and a chapel choir because we didn't used to sing the Gloria um, in, in, in morning Eucharist on a Sunday uh, to a setting. Uh, the song to Benedictus Nonius Dei was sung to a setting, but the Gloria was congregational. And we used to sing the Gloria to this hymn, Glory in the highest to the God of heaven, peace to all your people through the earth be given. It's a paraphrase on the, the Gloria in Excelsis Deo, the tune here is called Cuddersden. It's by William Ferguson and has been requested by Henk, who is one of our Dutch patrons. Hi, Henk. Thank you for your uh, patronage. It's very, very kind of you. Uh, three verses. Um, and yes, I'm really enjoying playing this organ um, really, really a lot. And I've, you may have noticed that I've put on my shoes today just because no other reason than I don't want to get into the habit of not wearing them. I like being um, ambidextrous in terms of <laughs> going between shoes and socks. I don't know, can you think of a better word to describe the going between the sock and the shoe um, during this hymn? So glory in the highest to the God of heaven for Henk. Never thought when I was playing this on the two manual tracker action organ uh, in uh, chapel on a Sunday morning that I would be playing this on a, f um, on a, a French cavalier col, 65 stop. Never thought that, never thought that indeed. It was just something that wouldn't have be, I wouldn't have been able to have comprehended. <laughs> um, and it is a real joy to be able to play these wonderful organs. I hope you agree. I do hope that you enjoyed last night's organ demonstration. It was done in the 
in the um, sort of the, the style that you've become accustomed to the rather chaotic, uh, noisy style cats. She's done that a few times recently, Nala, jumping up right at the very beginning of something and attacking me. You know, she did it for something else. What was it? I can't remember what it was for. Um, something else live. But she did it last night and she also pho um, photobombed my organ pedal video at the very beginning. She just appeared. <laughs> um, and she, la last night um, I had uh, this keyboard. This keyboard is a, it's a wireless keyboard um, and I use it to control my Hauptwerk computer. And I always have it just down here on the bench, just out of view, just in case anything happens and I, and I need to control Hauptwerk. It's just a safety net. And um, Nala, when, as I was introducing the video last night, she jumped up on the bench. Uh, I, was, I just thought, oh, here we go. Um, Caroline was otherwise engaged. And I didn't realize it straight away, but I, 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 over there somewhere I have my um, handwork screen um, and the uh, streaming screen. So I have two different screens. And I, I realized looking at the handwork screen that she'd walked on the keyboard and closed handwork or minimized it. So had I then switched to the, um, the stops screen, you know, I was demonstrating the stops because that's what the video was about, right? Demonstrating all of the stops. I would have gone to that and it would have just been nothing at all. It would have been a blue background, a blue windows background because Nala had minimized Hauptwerk. So I noticed the nick of time and I didn't mention a thing. And it was seamless. In fact, I shouldn't have told you now because you would have never have known, but it's um, one of the joys of virtual church. It's the chat element of virtual church. It gives you the, the background um, insight. Right, this next hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain An Interest in the Saviour's Blood, is a request from Roger. I think, Roger, you've been waiting. Um, no, Roger. I, I don't know which Roger it is. They've got a Roger. I've got two Rogers here. Um, but, I, but I do know that Roger, this Roger is a patron. So it must be, um, I'm not going to say surnames, but I think I know who this Roger is. Uh, Roger, um, I think, may have been very, very helpful with a camera. I'm going to say nothing more than that. <laughs> uh, if it is, thank you. If not, thank you anyway um, for your patronage. Um, this is the, one of the problems of um, having Caroline zoom off to, um, to look after Hugo. I'm left alone. It's like, where, where's my producer gone? My, where's my director? <laughs> um, don't leave it to me. Anything can happen if I'm by myself. So this is and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood. Um, it's, apparently it's from Thomas Campbell, the bouquet in 1825. Words are by Charles Wesley, that about which we can be sure.
Now, what I was going to say last time was that the requester of this next hymn, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, I think we're a bit like sinners, because this hymn had been requested a long time ago. I'm only just getting around to playing it. This is one of the hazards of having um, a rather popular virtual church series. We, have a, we do have a lot of requests and um, getting around to them in any single week is quite a challenge. Um, it's taken us a few weeks to get to Rogers, uh, the, another Rogers uh, request. So come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love and power. And then there's a refrain, I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me with his arms in the arms of my dear Saviour. Oh, there are 10,000 charms. There are four verses. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen this before in my entire life. So we'll have to, I think I might solo out the tune for my sake, actually, because I want to be able to get to know this tune. So I'm going to use some of the mutations on the, um, the Grand Org. I'm going to use the eight and four flutes along with the flute harmonique. Such a beautiful solo. Stop that. Um, what should we have? So the tears, the quint, and the eight and four flutes. And then we'll accompany that with the flutes, the bordens on the swell, coupled down to the choir, or the of positive. That should sound pretty nice, I think. So this is um, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy.
There we go. I think that was um, really worth the wait, actually. Um, really beautiful music indeed. I just got a feeling, you know, um, from looking at the music and, and some of the words here, that I didn't, I felt like it didn't need to be um, full swell, uh, you know, mixtures are sort of a plain jus, it doesn't, didn't need to be that, it needed to be more reflective, even though the words in the refrain are, I will arise and go to Jesus. I think that's more of a more of a statement, you know, come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and free, that Jesus is going to save you. Um, he's, he, he has pity for you, he has love, and he is your power. I will uh, arise and go to Jesus. I think it's more about uh, embracing him as, as opposed to, um, I don't know, celebrating and shouting you know, joyful praise. It's more about accepting the um, um, uh, embracement of him, to me anyway. Thank you very much, Roger, and thank you for your patience. <laughs> um, Roger is another Patreon, so thank you very much. I do, um, if you're not a Patreon, uh, please do consider becoming one because, quite simply, we wouldn't be able to do this without the support of um, um, my patrons. Simple, uh, it's as simple as that. Um, we are able to go to bigger and better places and even just to survive because of you Patreons and also because of donations. So thank you very much to those of you who have donated and of course to those of you who are Patrons. Um, please do check out the website if you'd like to become one and support the channel. Right, where should we go next? Let's go to the, this famous um, one, which you may know. Oh, you may know this one. If I going to do anything more than a C major arpeggio. <laughs> Um, William, another Patreon, thank you very much for this. Um, morning has broken like the first morning. So again, this is another quiet one, just allow uh, allowing us to explore some of these quieter stops. So let's go for the uh, Nazard. Um, do you remember last night there's no four foot flute on the uh, positive division, which is um, interesting. The Borden on the Grand Org is delicate, so that's a good accompanying stop. Stop, and I also have Borden out on the swell. So here we go. Morning has broken um, for William. Thank you very much, William. There we go, such a simple yet very effective hymn. Thank you very much, William, for requesting that. I do hope that was okay for you. Today we have a um, special birthday. It is the 181st birthday <laughs> of Sir John Stainer. Did you know that? <laughs> He's a little bit older than Francis Jackson. Um, so I thought we'd have a couple of ditties by him today. How many of you, um, 
I know people who live in this country, this doesn't apply to you, people who are outside of the UK. How many of you have heard of John Stainer and what is his most famous piece of choral music? Um, let me know in the chat. So whilst you're doing that, please, um, I haven't asked you to do this for a while, but please do, um, just let everyone, just let us know um, where you are in the world. Just put your, your city, your country. It's really wonderful uh, for me and for everyone in the chat to uh, see how far reaching we are in today's virtual church congregation. So please do let us know where on earth you are, <laughs> literally. The next hymn then is, it's not Stainer, I don't think, it's 10,000 times, 10,000 in sparkling raiment bright, the armies of the ransomed saints throng up the steeps of light. It's a good word that, isn't it? Throng up. Um, Tis finished, all is finished, their fight with death and sin. Fling open wide the golden gates, and let the victors in. There's a um, wonderful section in this particular piece that I'm trying to get out of you by John Stainer with um, flinging wide the gates. Fling open wide the golden gates. Well, there you go. How about that? <laughs> it's just coincidental. Um, so this has been requested by Richard. Thank you very much for requesting this. It doesn't look familiar to me at all. So Richard, thank you for bringing this to my attention. And I guess uh, there'll be other people in the chat who haven't heard this one as well. So I'll, once again, I'll solo out the melody for the first verse. Let's use the, uh, the positive trumpet, which is on divisional number six down there. Okay, 10,000 times, 10,000 in sparkling raiment bright.
Thank you very much, Richard. Um, that's a really wonderful tune. No, I had never heard that before. John Dykes uh, wrote the tune. There was a few tunes by John Dykes in um, the green NEH, the New English Hymnal, and the words are by Henry um, Alford, or Alford. So thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. I, like, I really like um, um, discovering new hymns. You know, there's not many hymns, well, I guess there are, I guess there are hundreds and thousands. But what I, must, what I mean is the hymns that you guys request, not many of them, I don't know. Most of them I do know. Uh, but that one, no, I did not know that at all. Well, congratulations, by the way, uh, most of you guessed um, this piece, the Stainer Crucifixion. And I really wanted just to, to play something from here. Most people who've... Um, uh, sung in a choir, whether that be church choir or a choral society, wherever, will know this little ditty, this very beautiful ditty, uh, God So Loved the World. It's often done um, as a motet by itself um, in a church service. God so loved the world, you all know the words, don't you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoso believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. And so on, you know these words. Uh, but, th but, that the wor uh, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay, so this is um, usually scored for SATB, but I will play it... Um, um, on the on the organ, try to f bring out some of the, um, the lines in various colours. This hasn't been requested. This is my own request. So this is uh, this is the God so loved the world from Stainer John Stainer's um, oratorio, The Crucifixion.
There we go. So that ditty came from the rather larger ditty, um, the crucifixion. God so loved the world. Yes, I had, I've spent, it's probably about three and a half hours practicing that piece just for you today. <laughs> okay, so I, I, yes, here is the mysterious John Lewis pink flower, which we probably need to water because the leaves are looking very sad. The problem is we get flowers and we, don't, we never water them. We need to get them to better habits of watering the flowers. So can you see what it is? <laughs> John, if you can tell us what that is, then you can have the next request. Uh, right, so where are we going to next? Tantum ego, I think. Yes, tantum ego sacramentum. Um, I forget what the next words are in the, in the Latin. Um, that's a shame. <laughs> But the tune is, the reason I say that is because the tune is called Tantum Ergo Sacramentum. Um, the words are Christ is made the sure foundation and Tantum Ergo Sacramentum does not mean, does not mean that. Um, there are four verses of this. Um, this is normally in, in, in NAH and a lot of people will be expecting me to play the Westminster Abbey tune, which I played last week, I think. Um, or was it the week before? Yes, it was, week, it was a time when I had to play the virtual church twice because we were underwater. Yes, it was last week. Um, and, but today we're having a different tune. Um, so this is a French melody. So w good choice, King Laudrup. Um, this is a French melody played on a French organ. Uh, okay, so here we go. This is, um, as I said, Christ has made the shore foundation. And we, these words are Latin uh, from around 7th or 8th century. So really, really old but they've been translated here by John Neal. It, it does say slow, but I'm not, I won't pl play it too slow.
Well, John, I think you've managed to guess the um, name of the flower. So well done indeed for doing... Lots of people knew the name of the flower. How? I just don't know how you know. Is it, is it a really popular, common flower? Maybe we should go for something a little bit less popular. We need to get some water on it. Perhaps we'll do that. Can, someone, can somebody right at the very end of VC today just write in the chat, water that flower? Because we'll forget. Um, and we just need to keep watering them. It's, so it's really nice to have colour on the organ, isn't it? I hope you agree that you, it's just nice to have some, a bit of nature on the organ in amongst the candles, two of which, uh, one of, that one's come back to life. Oh, this one is just about, just about going, but it's um, struggling on. There we go, I've just moved it and it's, oh, it's about to go out, I think that one. <laughs> Never mind. Um, by the way, guys, so Caroline said just moments before we, we went live, um, it's John Stainer's birthday today, as I've spoken about already. So I thought, ooh, John Stainer's birthday, that would be interesting to play some of his organ music. So I went upstairs to look at my library. I didn't, I don't play anything by John Stainer. Um, I, I don't even, know, I didn't know whether I had anything in stock, as it were, in the library of his. Um, oh, there's a steam train going past. Oh wow, is it? Well, oh, there you go. Did you hear that? That was the Flying Scotsman. How'd you know that? It was in Winchester earlier. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? The Flying Scotsman has just gone past. Those people in England and the UK will all know what the Flying Scotsman is. People who don't, it's a very famous British um, uh, uh, locomotive steam train. I think it was it set the land speed record, didn't it? I think going from London to Scotland or something. Um, that was pretty cool. There you go. Flying Scotsman. So anyway, he distracted me from my story. I went upstairs to see whether I've got anything by John Stainer. And I've got a book here. Twelve pieces uh, for the organ. Book two. I didn't have book one. Um, I don't know where this book has come from, but it's been handed down to me. Um, by the looks of it, it's rather, rather old. Um, and I've never before opened it. So I, I don't play anything from here. But there is something. I opened it and I thought, mm, can I sight read something? And there's something in here called, where is it? A church prelude. It's marked Allegretto Crotchet equals 80. So I thought we could probably have a quick look through this together, sight read it together, and see what it's like on this wonderful organ. So I'll, uh, I'll psych myself up to that in a short while. Um, and apparently, well, I, I can't. I can, I can smell candles. I'm going to play some Mozart. Um, this is this is the Ave Verum Corpus um, because I haven't got another hymn ready. So this has been requested uh, by um, Mark. Mark is one of our patrons, um, and apparently, it's is. Why am I playing this? Uh, yeah, there was another reason. Anyway, uh, Mark, can you please remind us why we're playing this? Um, the Church of England, um, I think, is it is it something for uh, um, is it for something to do with Mary today? Um, this is probably why I've chosen this. How very unprofessional! Uh, so another another organ arrangement, um, off the cuff. It's a, the choral version of Mozart's beautiful um, um, Ave Verum Corpus. This is one of the very 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 final pieces that Mozart wrote. Um, it's amazing to think that he could write something so simple, so beautiful, uh, at the very end of his life, after having written all of those symphonies, those wonderful operas, and those wonderful piano concertos, etc., etc. then he, this is the last thing he wrote. So, yes, I can, I can smell the steam now. That's really, that's flying Scotsman um, pollution. Lovely. So, Mozart, Harvey Verum Corpus uh, by Mozart.
There we go, such a beautiful piece there by um, old um, Wolfie, as he was nicknamed in the in Amadeus film. Or Wolfie, should I say. Okay, so where we, are we going next? This is a piece uh, by a chap who would have certainly have heard of Mozart. It's fair to say that most composers have heard of Mozart, but Beethoven um, would certainly have heard um, of him and would have studied his music very, very thoroughly, I'm sure. Uh, Beethoven um, Symphony No. 1 could almost be Mozart, if you know that one in C minor. It's very, very um, classical in style, as opposed to, you know, when number five then starts to break off into the Romantic period. Uh, so anyway, Mozart, sorry, Beethoven uh, wrote, as you know, nine symphonies. Um, and this tune is taken from the final uh, symphony. It's, um, it's become known as Ode to Joy. And the words in this hymn book are, Sing to God new songs of worship. Um, but I think actually maybe uh, Matt, who is one of our patrons, was, was going to be singing the words, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Whatever words you want to sing, that's absolutely fine. Makes no difference to me, obviously. But I will play it, shall I play it through uh, three times? Because there are three verses in this, in this hymn book. If you've got two verses in your hymn book, just repeat one of them. Or sing it a bit slower, and then we'll <laughs> get to the end at the same time. Okay, so um, this is for Matt, as I've just said. Matt is a patron. Hi, Matt. And it is Ode to Joy uh, by Beethoven. It's good to have this GoPro come back to life. It just beeps at me. I don't know why it's gone off. Well, I suspect it's something to do with the power supply, to be honest with you. Anyway, that's not for you to worry about. That's for me to worry about. Here we go. There we go, that was Beethoven's ninth in a nutshell. <laughs> um, quiz question, which symphony is often referred to as Beethoven's tenth? Oh. I'll give you a clue, it's not by Beethoven. <laughs> the next hymn um, is Christ is the world in which we move, Christ's are the I don't know why there's an apostrophe there. Apostrophe S, and two Christs. <laughs> Let's try that again. Christ's is the world in which we move. Christ's are the folk we're summoned to love. Christ's is the voice which calls us to care. And Christ is the one who meets us here. 
So I think it's, um, Christ, his own, is the world. So it's his, his world in which we move. Um, we are his people. Christ's are the folk. We're someone to love. I just not, hadn't quite seen Christ used in that way before. Christ, apostrophe est, is the world. Um, hmm, this is apparently is a Scottish folk melody, and it's been harmonised by John Bell. Um, the words are also by John Bell. I think they, so he had a bit of a hand in writing the words and the music. I think he had a bit of a helping hand, apparently, by Graham Maul. Okay, so the tune is called uh, Dream um, Angus, and it has been requested by Anne Dantino, another one of our uh, long-serving patrons. So thank you very much, Anne. This looks like quite a quiet one, so I'll, um, I'll get into my reflective mood and then I'll play a wonderful organ piece afterwards, about four minutes long, um, depending on how fast I play it, which starts very quietly and then has a great big almighty crescendo in it. It's a well-known piece, um, and it's actually a British um, piece. I think you'll rather like it on this organ. So before we get to that, this is Andantino's request, Christ's is the world in which we move.
Well, I'm very glad that you all managed to get the Brahms First Symphony as Beethoven's tenth. I think that's very unfair actually to compare that be simply because Beethoven wrote nine symphonies. So he had nine symphonies worth of practice. And then to say Brahms wrote number 10, um, um, as to say that, you know, um, he, he, Brahms somehow acquired all of that experience and knowledge that Beethoven had right on those nine to go straight in with number one and it'd be Beethoven's 10th. I don't know, that's a bit unfair, isn't it? Um, can't possibly match up to Beethoven, the greatness of particularly the late Beethoven. Brahms is a composer that I really admire um, and love and uh, haven't really had the chance or the opportunity to get to know his music yet. I know it is choral music, there isn't a lot of choral music, but there are some very beautiful motets. And Guy Schlieker's Lieder obviously is a very famous one. Uh, and there are a number of organ chorales which I uh, play and indeed I've played to you guys. Um, but it's, uh, his orchestral stuff, you know, the, the Hungarian Rhapsodies, the piano music, I don't necessarily know very well. I'd like to get into it. So, a question for you guys. What would you recommend um, in terms of an orchestral piece uh, to a newcomer to Brahms' as orchestral music? What are you going to recommend that someone like me um, should listen to? I know Eddie King might appreciate that as well. Maybe Eddie and I can... Um, uh, get into the modern music, the classic, the modern stuff with a bit of Brahms. <laughs> okay, so I did say I'm going to play an, an organ piece. This is a request by Eddie. <laughs> so Eddie, um, he likes the greats. He doesn't necessarily like modern music. He doesn't like clashy chords and all of that sort of stuff. And he's asked me to play George Falbin Ball's wonderful Elegy. This is the piece I mentioned which starts quietly and has this great big almighty crescendo. The good news is this organ does a crescendo very, very well indeed. Um, so we'll be able to get on, when we get towards the last page, we'll be hopefully on tutti on this Kavai Kol instrument. Um, I do have, I don't know whether it's online at the minute, but there is a recording, a performance of me playing this uh, elegy uh, in, in Say Cathedral. Um, which is in the Normandy province in France, north uh, France, um, in which there is a three manual uh, cavicle, smaller than uh, Nancy, but it's prob probably the same sort of size as Caen, actually, possibly a bit smaller, I don't know. Um, but it's a real organ, a pipe organ, and there is a performance somewhere, I don't know whether it's online or not, of me playing this piece on that cavicle. It would be very interesting to compare the two. Anyway, enough waffle. Let me um, get these stops ready. So I'm going to go for the really luscious um, foundation sound. So let's just basically go for all the eight foots across all divisions, um, including the bombard. Couple them all down to the Grand Org or the Great. Um, and then I'll accompany the tune on the swell only. I'll not have the string, I'll have the uh, the viola, but I won't have the uh, voix celeste. I'll save it to the very end. Okay, here we go then. This is um, Falbin Ball's Elegy for Eddie.
Isn't that such a stunning piece of music? You know, that was originally um, improvised by Thalben Ball himself after a service, I think, broadcast on Radio 3. And it's really interesting to note that when Thalben Ball plays this piece on, uh, on his recording, it's actually much faster and there's a very different interpretation to how every other organist plays it. You know, it's one of those examples where um, the composer of a piece has a very different idea about how a piece might go than other organists and other interpreters. I think that works particularly slow. Uh, sorry, it works particularly well if it's played at a very controlled, slow, measured tempo. If it's just slow and the quavers start to drag and the crotchets just feel like you're wading through um, treacle, I think it really ruins the effect. But if it has the drive, uh, forward momentum, I think it's a really terrific piece indeed. Liz Rawson, yes, uh, yes, Roger Fisher, rest in peace. Roger Fisher was a very accomplished uh, virtuoso um, organist here in the UK, director of music at Chester Cathedral for a very long time, um, and was a bit of a concert organist, really. He made some really monumental recordings, particularly the, um, the Roibka Sonata on the 94th Psalm, which you heard Andrew Wyatt play at Truro a few weeks ago. Uh, Roger really did, um, has recorded the benchmark performance of that piece on an old LP from, um, from Chester. And that's the, that's the recording that most people go to, to um, seek inspiration from it. A very w wonderful player and passed away after, a, um, after a, a, an illness just this week. Uh, so very sad, um, however his legacy is, um, will go on for a long time. His wonderful recordings and his reputation as a, as a rather fierce choir master. Uh, hymn books flying across the choir room at Chester. Um, anecdotes like that um, are aplenty. I was an organ scholar at Chester, not in, Robert, not in Roger's time, um, but Roger's legacy certainly lived on. And he had his own, uh, on the organ console, Roger always had his own channel, so he would always just be able to flick his, you know, um, his settings, uh, the channel onto his settings, and he'd be able just to go um, as if he was at home. And I do remember on one occasion, um, he sort of scuttled up. He was, for some reason, playing the voluntary. Um, I think it was a, I don't know why, it was a funeral or a m memorial service, and Roger was playing the voluntary for this service. Um, and, um, one of the other organists was playing, and Roger used to like the, um, the bench. Um, I forget, he was quite a short man, so I think he must have had it quite low. Um, um, but anyway, we had to adjust the bench because it wasn't right. So he scuttled up um, after the hymn, jumped on the organ bench, and told us to raise it up, um, or maybe it was down. So what I was on one side of the organ bench, the, the, uh, another organist, Ian, was on the right hand side, and as he was playing um, the, the voluntary, um, we were winding the organ bench and he was just going down, going down like that. Um, there we go. That's, that's, um, yeah, wonderful memories of Roger going, going to his um, Wesleyan chapel as well and playing his, his wonderful organ. Did you know Philip Rushforth is uh, Roger Fisher's stepson? Um, so I think uh, R Philip Rushforth has a great, a great mentor uh, in, in Roger. So the next hymn we will have is um, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. It's Psalm 23, of course. I don't need to tell you that. The tune is crimmoned and is a request from Sarah. Sarah, get well soon. Sa Sorry? Get well soon, Sarah. Get well soon, Sarah. Do I need to say that to Sarah? Or? Okay, Sarah, I hope you get well soon. I don't know what's the matter with you, but I really hope you get better soon. Um, hopefully this hymn will um, make you feel better. I've just been told to say that, so um, best, best wishes to you for whatever reason. Okay, so the Lord's my shepherd I'll not want.
And the next hymn is called King's Fold. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary, weary, ri I've got a bit of a lisp going on. Weary. Lay down, thou weary, oh my gosh, weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. You might say that's easy for me to say, <laughs> but today it isn't. Weary, weary. I've not had any wine, this is just Coke in here. I promise, and nothing else. I've got a little bit of a naughty Noel Rawsthorn here uh, for the last verse of this. Normally I end in E minor, but this one looks like it ends with a TS de Picardie. Three verses of Kingsfold. I heard the voice of Jesus say, and this is a request from Richard. It's good to have a couple of Richards in with us today. Uh, so three of us in total, that's a good number. Three Richards. Is there a um, collective name for three Richards? Uh, Richard is also a patron. So thank you very much, Richard, for your support. I often uh, get um, correspondence from one of our uh, fellow listeners, um, Mrs. Elizabeth Rawsthorn, who knew Noel Rawsthorn rather well, you might say, and get, often get some really wonderful anecdotes and um, photographs of the great man. And apparently, a lot of these, um, or a lot of these uh, last first arrangements were written um, whilst on holiday. Um, on a balcony, I think, over breakfast and... But I wonder whether this one was actually written on the balcony after cocktails, with a cheeky grin in his eye. This'll show them, I can imagine him saying. 
that one is sort of, it goes off the beaten track a little bit, doesn't it? Um, really wonderful um, harmonic progressions in that. Okay, let's go on to one of my favourites. This didn't make it for some reason to my top 10, even though it definitely isn't my top 10 today. So if I, if I was to give you top 10 today, this would be in it. It is Comrontha. Guide me, O thou great redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more more. Which is for Caroline, sorry? Senil. This is uh, for Senil. And one other, but I'm going to write it down. And one other who Caroline did not write down. Um, it was sacked. <laughs> Hugo can do it. Hello, Hugo. He's looking right at me. Daddy, what are you doing? I'm making a right old racket, that's what I'm doing. Don't blame me, blame, blame Noel Rawsthorne. <laughs> His eyes are wide open. Um, so here we go, uh, three verses of this wonderful uh, hymn. This announced for the pedal D in the final verse, low pedal D with the contrabombard rumbling away. You'll see what I mean when we get there. We need to get thinking about a voluntary tonight, by the way. So any suggestions for a voluntary? We are in France, uh, virtual, uh, we, are, we are using a virtual Kavai Kull, so anything you think that I might be able to play. A bit of Vidor, perhaps? Okay, here we go. Guide me, O thou great redeemer.
So Kungrantha there uh, played at a rather majestic tempo, I think, in a, in a, in a cathedral like Enonce. It needs to be that speed to compensate for the acoustic. And yes, this acoustic is absolutely real. You know, if I play a, play a chord in the cathedral itself, that's what you'd hear. You'd, you'd go around and around for ages. And, you know, these cathedrals in France um, built of such a, I don't know what the stone is, um, but it's obviously a, a very resonant stone which um, re reflects the, um, the sound. Wonderful stone roofs and no carpet in sight, often, um, you know, single wooden chairs, nothing to absorb the sound. Um, so this, the, the acoustic, the, the sound of the organ will resonate around these churches and, and cathedrals for a long time. And it's the, um, if there's any people in uh, France watching today, you're very fortunate to have such beautiful buildings. Here in the UK, we have a lot of beautiful churches. Um, obviously, we had the Reformation in this country, uh, but we have a lot of beautiful parish churches on a much smaller scale. Um, but yes, yeah, so this acoustic, people say there's too much echo. Sorry, I didn't design the building. I wasn't the architect. <laughs> anyway, so the next hymn that we're going to have today is going to be um, Ko Fen. How shall I sing that majesty? This is a new to a lot of people. Um, it's a relatively recent hymn. It's by Kenneth Naylor, uh, the music, and the words are by John Mason. It is a request from Jerry. Um, thank you very much, Jerry, for everything that you do. Jerry is another patron of ours. I think you want us to see um, Hugo's earphones just to um, prove to you that we're not um, we're not deafening the, po the, p the poor little lad. So look, here he is with his little headphones on. <laughs> oh dear. Bought these because we're going to a, a car festival in July and um, obviously car festivals have lots of loud engines. So uh, we bought, bought them for that reason, but actually they're rather good um, for virtual church in here because it gets rather loud in here. It's good practice, isn't it? Isn't it? You can't hear me because you've got your ear defenders on. <laughs> I could be saying anything to you. Yeah, go back to mummy. I need to play this hymn for, for Jerry. I need to play this uh, John Stainer as well. So I'll play the Kofen for you, Jerry, and then I'll have a, we'll have a look at this um, Stainer together afterwards. Then we'll have one more hymn, and then we'll have the voluntary.
So that's what Cofen sounds like on, um, on this wonderful organ. Now I'm really intrigued, we know we're just actually pushing it for time a little bit. Um, the vergers want to come in and close up the church. Um, but I'm, I'm going to play this, I'm going to sight read, for better or for worse, um, this piece by John Stainer because it is his 181st birthday today. Don't know it. And um, if you excuse my language, it may be utter garbage, but we won't know until we get there. So there may be a reason why it's never heard. Do you want to listen to it with me? And let's, let's, let's discuss it afterwards. After this, um, we will have one of my favorite hymns, which was in the top 10, and then we'll have the voluntary today. So keep your requests coming in for voluntaries. We've had some good ones already. I can't play the Dupre B major, certainly not without practicing it. <laughs> um, or, or even the G minor, that, that's definitely practice territory, isn't it? So this is a church prelude, apparently, by John Stainer. So let's have a look at this to see how it goes. Apologies if it's um, not very good. You never know, it may be an absolute unearthed masterpiece. And Jerry Martin, you might want to feature it on your channel because you like to play unknown music, don't you? Here we go, so John Stainer's um, a church Prelude. Eek.
Well, there you go. I wouldn't put it in the top drawer of compositions. To be honest, um, and I'm amazed that you all stuck around to see it out, to be honest. Um, Good, I'm glad that you liked it. I'm not sure it was my particularly favourite piece um, in the entire world. But there we go, that's well, just me. <laughs> well, that's fine. If we all liked the same thing, if, we, if I played the same thing on Beauty and Sound regularly, wouldn't it be a dull place to be? That's a, a job. Um, my job as a musician is to play music that doesn't necessarily speak to me and I wasn't quite sure what he was doing with that and actually it goes off into all sorts of keys um, G flat major towards the middle um, with all sorts of accidentals in that bit suddenly going towards uh, B major crumbs and then all sorts of accidentals in that section before going to D flat major or actually no, B minor B flat minor sorry and uh, then back to <laughs> back to E major there. I know, I know. I'm going to go into E minor, and then finally return into the home key of E flat major. <laughs> there we go. So that was John Steiner. Okay, I want to stick in the same key of E flat major, and this is going to be our last hymn today. It's going to be "Abide with Me, Fast Falls the Even Tide," and it's for Larry. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, this is a wonderful hymn and one of my absolute favourites. I'd just like to draw your attention to an organ recital that I'm giving next Saturday. Uh, Buxtehude and Bach on the wonderful organ in the Netherlands um, in St. Um, uh, Martini Kirk. And the location just currently escapes me. But it's on the um, schedule. It's a new organ that's just entered the Beauty and Sound fleet. You've not heard it on here before. You may have heard other people play it, although don't think you may have. Um, it's not a um, uh, well, what, how, what, should, what word should I use? It's not very common on YouTube, but it's a wonderful, wonderful organ. W wonderful indeed. It's very, very good for bark. Very clear. I've been playing it. Um, so that's next Saturday, usual time, 7.30. Bark and Buxtefude. Um, account for that. Um, and then the trio starts number three is coming the week after that. Very excited to go to uh, Guildford. I'm going on Wednesday, I think this week, to record the organ there. Uh, look out for the Recording Guildford series this month. The recital is coming uh, to a screen near you um, on the 29th, uh, towards the end of the month, the last Saturday, I think, in the month. I think the last Saturday in the month. I'm really excited to, to head up to Guildford to record the organ there. That's what I said. I did say that yeah, as well. I did say that. Um, so here we go. The final hymn today is "Abide with Me, Fast Falls the Even Tide," and I gather that's requests are still coming in for an organ voluntary. So we'll have to uh, work it out uh, as I'm playing this hymn, won't we? So here we go. This is "Abide with Me."
Well, I think it's fair to say that we had a bit, a bit of a draw in the uh, chat with regards to an organ vol. So, got this piece by Jigou here, Eugene Jigou, to cart R in B minor, which um, should sound pretty good on this organ. And then I'm going to play, um, for my sins, um, another Takata after this. Um, so actually you're going to have two voluntaries today. You've just had the Stainer, <laughs> um, and then you're going to have two voluntaries. Aren't you a lucky bunch of people today? Not only did you get to hear the infamous or the world famous Flying Scotsman um, live here on Beauty and Sound. That's something that I couldn't have advertised on the schedule, is it? Is it? Um, and you're also going to get two volunteers. So here we go. This is the Jigu Takata in B minor. Let's have a look to see what he wants in terms of uh, registration. So on the Grand Org and on the positive, the font, eight and four, we can do that. So eight, eight, get all of, all of those on, like, just like that. Couple them together, done. Um, and the um, and the orange, so that's the reeds eight and four as well. So he wants the eight and four reeds on those divisions. There we go. Tick. Next challenge, please. Um, on the pedal, he wants the f the the fonts, so we can have the sixteen, eight, and four. Well, let's get all those on, shall we? There we go. He doesn't want any reeds just yet. So he wants the the reeds to be prepared. There we go. So here we go. We are now set up, ready for this Jigu. Um, he wants us to start on the positive. And so let's make sure the couplers are all in place. Couplers often catch me out, as you know. Let's take off the great to, great to uh, what do you call it now, the pedal. I think we're about there. So this is tonight's first voluntary, the Jigu Takata in B minor.
Well, Bob Elman's Takata was requested by your good selves, as was the Jigu. So you had them both. And thank you all very much for all of your requests today, all of your hymns. Really nice selection today. Um, good variety of um, popular hymns and not so um, well-known ones as well. It's nice to have those uh, just for the you know exposure of new hymns. It's nice for Hugo to be involved as well. Thank you very much, Hugo, for being relatively well behaved today. Um, Nala's just got involved right now. Hi, guys. <laughs> you can't miss out, can you, on these streams? So apart from Bobby, we've got the whole family here. Um, and thank you all to everyone who has donated today. You've been very generous. Um, it's really inspiring, really encouraging, and really helps um, me uh, to be assured that we can do this full time and that we can um, build it and make it into better things and bring you new exciting content. So thank you very much for your generosity. Um, I'd like to um, put my hands together virtually for this wonderful organ. I think it's done a, a, a very, very good job uh, at handling today's virtual church. It's nice, uh, actually, for me to be able to get to know it um, in a, you know, as I said earlier, a live. I'm just having to, I'm stroking Nala and there's hair flying everywhere. Um, and there's no wonder these um, pedals are getting uh, um, <laughs> fairly, um, um, you know, contacts are getting a bit dodgy. I blame the cat, not my pedal technique. Um, yes, there we go. Yeah, the organ's done particularly well. I think it's really wonderful to play, and I really enjoy playing it. I hope that's. Um, I hope the organ comes across well over on YouTube. I wish you could hear it in here. It sounds phenomenal in here. It really, really does. Um, it's going to be one of my go-to organs, particularly when I get the new um, the new organ console with more stops, and I'm going to be able to properly line up all of the stops on the digital organ rather than having to use this thing which by the way I've actually just tied it up for the new organ um, a combination of this and the physical stops is a bit of a nightmare really to be honest and it's not very it's a bit off putting to say the least but on the new organ I'll be able to have all the stops just here on the on the on the actual physical um, stops on this thing so that can't come soon enough Okay, so, Caroline, have you got something to say? Quick. Lisa and Keith said, water the flower. They've reminded us to water the flower. There we go, you see? So we can go and get some water now in a jug. And, and then we can... Lisa said, water the damn flowers. Yes, indeed, we need to water that flower. Thank you very much for reminding us. I think we would have, genuinely would have forgotten. So thank you for that. Nala's uh, starting to cause havoc. She's here, look. The, the picture of Nala's on the screen right there, and her tail is there, so she's ready for her supper, as are we. Good night, everyone. See you next Saturday for the organ recital. Bar Bark and Buxtehude, um, two Baroque uh, masters. Um, don't miss out on that one. So until then, we will all say cheerio. Goodbye, everyone. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> I can't get to my button because Nile's in front of it. Go on, Chip, clear off. <laughs> right. I was just turned off the television. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Bye, everyone. <laughs>